السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as you have heard the announcement that the topic of today's talk is about how to instill the love of the Quran, the book of Allah Azza wa Jal in your heart. And it is part of the series of lectures that is going to take place over the next few weeks inshallah for the purpose of preparing ourselves for the blessed month of Ramadan. The preparation for Ramadan requires a believer to prepare himself spiritually, mentally, and physically as well. Therefore, we need to modify or change our daily routines and habits. And part of the daily routine of a true believer is the recitation of the Quran. A believer cannot spend his days and nights without reciting the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is something for which we find no example in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the time of the companions, the early generations of Muslims, that they spent their days and their nights without reciting the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Starting from our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we all know that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he used to recite the Qur'an during the day and particularly more in the night and his, in his night prayers. And as soon as the month of Ramadan would begin, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, would increase his recitation of the Qur'an. And this was also the practice of the companions of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised them in the Qur'an, within the Qur'an. Allah says in Surah Fatir, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةِ يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُوقُ Verily those who recite the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and they establish the prayer, and they give and they spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what we have bestowed on them. And they spend in charity secretly and openly. And those people who have these qualities and these characteristics, yarjuna tijarat and lantabur, they are doing some kind of trade with Allah where there will be no loss. And they will have great benefit in that trade because they are doing that trade with Allah Dhul Jalali Ul Ikram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise those who recite the Quran during the day and particularly during the nights. In Surah Ali Imran when he said Min Ahlil Kitab Ummatun Qaimatun Yatluna Ayatillahi Ana al Layli wahum yasjudun from the from amongst the people of the book, those who converted to Islam and they had strong love for the book of Allah Azza wa Jal so much so, yatluna ayatillahi ana al that they recite the verses of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram not only during the day, in fact they recite the book of Allah Azza wa Jal in night, wahum yasjudun. And they prolong their, their sajdas as well, referring to their night prayer. So recitation of the Qur'an, reciting the Qur'an during the day, during the night, 
This is one of the outstanding characteristics of the believers. Allah Jalal-Ikram has encouraged us to recite his Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through his statements, through his ahadith, as well as through his practice. He Alayhi Salatu Wasallam has encouraged us to have that strong love for the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and we should continue reciting the Quran day and night. So let's go through some of the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm not sure how many of you actually attended a seminar that we held in this masjid a couple of months ago. And during that seminar, our guest speaker, our teacher, Sheikh Abdullah Al-Ubaid, Hafizahullah, he went through a book of the, on this particular topic, Fada'ilul Qur'an. And that book contained many of the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regards to the virtues of the Qur'an itself as well as those who recite the Qur'an, those who read the Qur'an, those who have the love for the recitation of the Qur'an. So it will not be possible to cover all the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regards to the virtues of the recitation of the Qur'an in one lecture, but let's go through some of them. First and foremost, it should be in mind that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given a, an example of the person who recites the Quran and the person who does not recite the Quran. And when you hear this hadith, I would encourage every single one of you to ask yourself, which category do you fall in? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna alladhi لَيْسَ فِي جَوْفِهِ شَيْءٌ مِّنَ الْقُرْآنِ كَالْبَيْتِ الْخَرِبِ The person who has nothing of the Qur'an in his heart, in his sight, he does not have any Qur'an in his inside, in, the, in, in his heart or in his mind. He is like a bayt al kharib he is like a ruined house. A house that is abandoned and a house where no one wants to enter. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ الَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ مَثَلُ الْأُتْرُجَّةِ رِيحُهَا طَيِّبُ وَطَعْمُهَا طَيِّبُ And this hadith is, gives a, 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 you know, a bit more detail. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ الَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ the parable and the example of the believer who recites the Qur'an on a regular basis, he is like an orange, a sweet orange. This fragrance, his smell is good and its taste is also sweet. The believer who recites the Qur'an day and night and the one who has the habit of reciting the book of Allah Azza wa Jal all the time, and he does not miss a day or night in which he does not recite the Quran. Such believer is like an orange. The orange that is sweet and its smell is sweet and its taste is sweet as well. وَمَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ الَّذِي لَا يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ كَمَثَلِ التَّمْرَةِ لَا رِيحَ لَهَا وَطَعْمُهَا حُلُّ and the believer who does not recite the Qur'an, he's like a date. A date. Date has no smell. It has no fragrance. But its taste is sweet. So this is the difference between the believer who recites the Qur'an and the believer who does not recite the Qur'an. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَثَلُ munafiq." الذي يقرأ القرآن كمثل الريحانة ريحها طيب وطعمها مر and the munafiq and the hypocrite who recites the Quran which shows this hadith also indicates that not every single reciter of the Quran or not every individual who recites the Quran is a true believer hadith indicates 
that the munafiqeen and the hypocrites, they also recite the Qur'an. وَمَثَلُ الْمُنَافِقِ الَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ And the munafiq who recites the Qur'an, the Prophet ﷺ said, كَمَثَلِ الرَّيْحَانَ He is like a basil, that its smell is nice, but its taste is bitter. وَمَثَلُ الْمُنَافِقِ الَّذِي لَا يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ كَمَثَلِ الْحَنْظَلَةِ and the hypocrite that does not recite the Qur'an, he's a munafiq and he does not have any attachment with the Qur'an. He's like a hanzala. Hanzala is type of, a, a type of uh, say, vegetation or vegetable that, is, that, is, that has no good smell and its taste is very, very strong and bitter. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith, has given the examples of the believer who recites the Qur'an and the believer who does not recite the Qur'an. The munafiq who recites the Qur'an and the munafiq who does not recite the Qur'an. So every single one of us should ask himself and herself in which category we fall. Are we amongst those believers, those who recite the Qur'an every single day? Is the recitation of the Qur'an part of our daily routine? If not, then now it is a time to change yourself. Now it is a time. Don't wait until the first night of the month of Ramadan. Because if you keep delaying it, if you don't adopt the habit of reciting the Qur'an now, what would happen? Exactly what happened in the previous years to you. And you all know well. When the month of Ramadan starts, on the very first night you have passion and you are so eager to attend the masjid and start reciting the Qur'an. Next morning, the very first fast when you are going to observe, you recite the Qur'an, you may recite a few pages and next day you reduce and third day you reduce even more and within first week you shut the Qur'an again until next Ramadan. These are nothing other than the tricks of shaitan. So you have to change yourself now. now. If you do not have the habit of reciting the Quran on a daily basis, then you need to adopt that habit. And no believer should have any excuse whatsoever of not being able to recite the Quran. This is such a lame excuse that cannot be accepted from a believer. Someone who believes in the Quran and he says, I am unable to recite the Quran. How is it possible? But unfortunately, we have amongst us many of us who do not recite the Quran, who continue spending their life having and holding, the, carrying this excuse that I am un, un, you know, uh, I'm unable to recite the Qur'an because I never learned in my childhood. So, inshallah, later I'm going to mention some of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to the recitation of the Qur'an and those hadith that clearly indicate that no believer should have an excuse that he is unable to recite the Qur'an because he never learned. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Encouraging the recitation of the Qur'an or highlighting the virtues of reciting the Qur'an and the virtues of those who have strong attachment with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who recite the Qur'an day and night. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith collected by Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, rahimahumallah, la hasada illa fithnayn, envy, and jealousy is not permissible except if you have the envy and jealousy towards two types of people. And the jealousy in a positive way. Hasad usually means that if you see a believer, if you see someone that he is blessed with the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have hatred towards him or towards the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on him and you desire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away those blessings from him. 
This is something that is haram. This is something that is classed as one of the major sins. This feeling falls within the category of the major sins. But there is another type of hasad, which is that if you see someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with something good, you desire and you wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you as well with the same favor. And in this context, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are two types of people that you should have the jealousy towards. And one of them is Rajulun Atahullahu al-Quran. The person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to memorize the Quran. He retained the Quran in his memory, in his heart. فَهُوَ يَقُومُ بِهِ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ وَآنَاءَ النَّهَابِ And he stands by the Qur'an and he recites the Qur'an during the day and during the night. When the Qur'an in his memory, he can recite it anytime while sitting, while walking, while driving and he has that great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that is not easy to achieve. But those who are blessed with the memorization of the Qur'an, they are no doubt selected and chosen people of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram as the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam confirms it. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in this hadith, the two types of people that you should have jealousy in a positive meaning, it, first one is... Uh, First one of them is Rajulun Atahu Allahu Al-Quran, the person that Allah Dhul Jalai Quran blessed him with the Quran and he decides the Quran during the day and during the night. Pay attention to this hadith. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam did not say the person who is blessed with the Quran, that's it. No. Fahuwa Yaqumu bi. The person who is blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the memorization of the Quran and he decides it as well. So those people. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enabled them to memorize the Qur'an. Either the entire Qur'an or few ajza of the Qur'an or few surahs of the Qur'an. There is no benefit in that blessing unless and until the person recites those ayat and those surahs and those ajza on a regular basis. Being a hafiz of the Qur'an... Someone who has memorized the Qur'an, having that title, means nothing at all if you do not recite the Qur'an. The true Hafiz is the one who has the love for the Qur'an, for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he recites the Qur'an every single day and every single night. That is why the people of the Qur'an, the people of the Qur'an, those who have the strong love, for the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, they are the chosen people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are the ones who recite the Qur'an on a daily basis as some of the scholars have said in terms of the daily routine of the recitation of the Qur'an or the portion of the Qur'an that a hafiz should be reciting they said a hafiz should recite at least three ajza of the Qur'an meaning hafiz Someone who has memorized the Qur'an cannot be truly hafiz unless and until he completes the Qur'an every 10 days. Not the one who abandons the Qur'an as, long, as soon as the month of Ramadan is over and then he picks, picks up the Qur'an just in the month of Sha'ban in order to prepare himself so that he is able to recite the Qur'an in Salatul Taraweeh. As for the person who has not memorized the Qur'an, it does not mean that the person abandons the Qur'an and he does not recite it and carrying the excuse that he is unable to recite. Rather, the scholars have said the person who is not a hafiz of the Qur'an should have a routine of reciting at least one juz of the Qur'an. This is what the scholars have defined as the love for the Qur'an. Meaning, if you do not recite one juz of the Qur'an on a daily basis, it means you do not really appreciate the blessings of the Qur'an. 
You do not have love for the Quran. Or you cannot claim that you have love for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the scholars of the Quran have said. And so, if this is the case, then each one of us need to ask, we need to ask ourselves, to what extent we have the love for the book of Allah, Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to encourage his companion, Idwanullahi alayhi majma'een, and he used to say to them, Ayyuhal mu'minun, iqra'u al-Qur'an. O believers, iqra'u al-Qur'an. Recite the Qur'an. Have the habit and the, adopt the habit of reciting the Qur'an. And it must be part of your daily routine. فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِ Because Qur'an will come on the day of judgment interceding on behalf of those who recited the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ also said in a long hadith and the part of the hadith is وَالْقُرْآنُ حُجَّةٌ لَكْ أَوْ عَلَيْكَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Qur'an will be an evidence in your favor or otherwise it will be an evidence against you on the day of judgment. My dear brother and sister in Islam, so imagine you are getting closer to the month of Ramadan now and it's been 10 months since the last Ramadan has passed. How many times have you recited the Quran? How many pages of the Qur'an you recite on a daily basis? What would you say on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question you about your relationship with the Qur'an? What do you think? Ask yourself. What do you think according to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu Is Qur'an going to be evidence in your favor? Or is the Qur'an going to be evidence against you on the day of judgment? Each one of us, we can judge ourselves. We don't need anyone else to judge us. Each one of us, we can judge ourselves. How many ajza of the Quran you have recited since last Ramadan? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled you to recite the Quran on a daily basis, then ask yourself how many times you have completed the Quran since last Ramadan? If the answer is that very little, then now it is the time to change. Adopt the habit of reciting the Quran. If your daily routine of the Quran is already there and you on, on a daily basis you recite the Quran, say if you recite one page, start increasing the recitation of the Quran, the amount of the pages gradually and slowly. So that when you enter into the month of Ramadan, you are able to recite even more acting upon the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you have a daily routine of reciting one juz, start increasing the amount now. So that when you enter into the month of Ramadan, you are able to recite at least two ajza every day. And if you are half it, then you are already reciting three ajza every day. Again, start increasing your amount of the recitation so that when the month of Ramadan starts, you are able to recite even more. Five ajza or six ajza. Some of the salaf used to recite the Quran ten ajza every single day. And the narrations, the narrations that some of the salaf, they completed the Quran within one night. And it is something that is possible. Regardless of the ruling, whether it is permissible or not permissible, this is something that the scholars have Discuss in, 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 in a lot of detail. But those who have a strong attachment with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can never ever have enough of the recitation, recitation of the Quran. As Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah has rightly said, the person whose heart is pure and clean, he can never have enough of the recitation of the Quran. But if you find the recitation of the Qur'an or reading the Qur'an as a burden on you, then it means there is a weakness in your iman and there is something wrong with your heart. Iman has not completely entered in your heart or your iman is so weak that you do not love, 
you do not have the love for the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraging his companions to recite the Quran on a regular basis. He Alaihi Salatu Wasallam said to one of his companions Abu Dhar Al-Ghifari radiyallahu ta'ala he said Alayka bi tilawat al-Quran O Abu Dhar hold on to the recitation of the Quran you should have your habit and your daily routine of reciting the Quran why? فَإِنَّهُ نُورٌ لَكَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَذُخْرٌ لَكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ because the recitation of the Quran is a light for you on this earth and it is a great saving for you in the heavens, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be saving a great reward for you for the day of judgment. As we all know, the famous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which he alayhi salatu wa sallam said, Man qara'a harfan min kitab Allah, whoever recites one single letter from the book of Allah azza wa jal, he is rewarded ten times. And then he alayhi salatu wa salam said, La aqool alif la meem harf. I don't say that alif la meem is harf. Bal alifun harf, wa la mun harf, wa meem mun harf. Rather alif is one letter, la is second letter, meem is third letter. Meaning if you recite, if you read alif la meem, these three letters, you are entitled to 30 rewards. Just imagine, my dear brother and sister in Islam, if you recite one page, how much of reward you can attain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you were to recite one complete juz, and if you were to recite three ajza, and if you were to recite ten juz, how much of reward you can accumulate? Here in this dunya, you may not appreciate that. But on the day of judgment, then you will realize. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, La aqulu alif la mim harf, some of the scholars have taken the ruling from this hadith that alif la mim, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, could have given the example of any word from the Quran. He could have said alhamd, he could have said malik, he could have said any, any other word. But when he said alif la mim, he alayhi salatu wasalam probably intended to highlight that the word alif la meem is from huruful muqatta'at that appear at the beginning of some of the surahs of the Quran like alif la meem, alif la ra, qaf, noon, taseen, taseen, meem, kaf, ha, ya, ayn, sad, like this. So these are called huruful muqatta'at. And the scholars have said that we do not know the meanings of these words. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Alif La Meem, he indicated that even if you do not understand the meaning of the Quran, you cannot abandon the recitation of the Quran. And unfortunately nowadays we have a new fitna, new fitna saying actually the main purpose of the Quran is to understand. So rather than focusing on the recitation of the Quran itself, the Arabic text, it is better for you to read the translation of the Quran. No, Wallahi. No. The way understanding the Quran is important, equally it is important to recite the Arabic text of the Quran. No matter how many times you recite, you read the translation of the meaning of the words of the Quran, you cannot attain that reward. That reward that you are rewarded ten times by reading one letter, it is specifically for the words of the Quran in Arabic text. And why? Because one of the names of the Quran is Kalamullah. Kalamullah. The words of Allah. The speech of Allah. Just imagine when you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm deen You recite these verses. You should have in your mind that by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your tongue is uttering exactly the same letter that your creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke. These are the words of Allah. 
How can you belittle the Arabic text of the Quran with the excuse or the trick of shaitan that you should focus on the translation because this is more important? No, you can't say which one is more important. Both of them are equally important. As the recitation of the Quran is important, understanding the Quran is also important. I don't say that you don't understand. Rather, you do need to see and read the translation of the Quran. Understand the Quran because this is a message from Allah. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarak liyadabbaru ayati wa liyatadhakkara ulul albab. Allah says this is the blessed book that we reveal to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that people can ponder and reflect on its verses and those who have intellect, they can take lessons from they, have, they, they can take lessons uh, for themselves from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, reading the translation, understanding the meaning is also important. But you cannot focus on this at the expense of neglecting the Arabic text. If the Arabic text was not an important, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have not encouraged us to say and he would not have given us the example of Alif La Meem. He particularly said, if you recite these three letters, Alif La Meem, for which you don't know the meaning, no one knows the true meaning of these letters, you are still rewarded 30 times. So you need to adopt this habit. In fact, Having the routine and the practice and the habit of reciting the Quran is the first step. Is the first step. And then the next step or the step you can take along with this is reading the translation and understanding the meaning of the Quran. A Muslim child, when the child is able to speak and start learning, the very first thing is what? we start teaching our children how to recite the Qur'an. We do not focus on the meaning of the Qur'an. Again, I don't say that the children should not be taught the meaning of the Qur'an. It is also important. But the very first focus is so that the child is able to recite the Arabic alphabets. Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha. What is the purpose of this? So the child is able to read the Qur'an. And this is the practice of the Muslims from generations, from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all the way up to now and it will continue inshallah until the day of judgment. So you, can, you cannot abandon the recitation of the Quran, rather you need to have a strong love for the recitation of the, of the Quran, the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in, a, in another hadith narrated by Uqba bin Amir radiyallahu ta'ala who says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and he entered upon us. Wa nahnu fi sufa Uqba radiyallahu ta'ala he was one of those 80 plus companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who used to live within the masjid of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. The masjid was the hostel or accommodation in such as Abu Hurair radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and many other companions and Uqba radiyallahu ta'ala he was one of them. He says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once entered upon us وَنَحْنُ فِي الصُّفَى and we were all sitting together فَقَالْ أَيُّكُمْ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يَغْدُوَ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ إِلَى بُطْحَانٍ and remember all these companions they were uh, financially poor people and the people of Medina they used to give sadaqah to them and some of them, even they could not have anything to eat, such as Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they would spend days and nights without having had any food or anything to eat. But they had love for the Quran, they had love for the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa entered upon them one day and he said, who amongst you, the people of Sufa, who amongst you wants to go to an area in the outskirts of Medina called the Butthan? He said, who amongst you wants to go there every single morning and he can get two she-camels free of charge? 
companions, these poor companions, they got excited. They said, who amongst us would not want to do this, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَفَلَا يَغْدُوا أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ فَيَعْلَمْ أَوْ يَقْرَى آيَتَيْنِ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ خَيْرُ اللَّهُ مِنْ نَاقَتَيْنِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Every morning when you people recite or learn only two ayat of the Qur'an, two verses of the Qur'an by Allah, these two verses are better for you in any, in every single form or shape. They are better for you than getting two she camels free of charge and if you were to recite if you were to learn three verses they would be better for you than three she camels and if you were to learn and recite four verses they would be better for you meaning the more you decide the better so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam encouraged them and he used to even encourage the companion to sit together in a circle all together and to read the quran towards uh, to read the Quran to each other. As the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Majtama'a qawmun fi baytim min buyutillah yatluna kitab allahi wa yatadarasunahu baynahum. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, there is no group of people who sit together in one of the houses of Allah dhul jalal yukram in a masjid reciting the Quran and reading to each other. Illa nazalat alayhimu sakina wa ghashiyatuhum al-rahma except the tranquility descends upon them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala engulfs them malaika and the angels of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surround them and wadakarahum Allah fi man and it's not only this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the mention of these very people Amongst those who are close to Allah, meaning Al-Mala'ul A'la, the closest angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the mention of these people through, uh, to, to those angels. And if you adopt the habit of the Quran, of, if you have that strong love for the Quran, then Wallahi, Allah would mention you by your name have you ever imagined that that Allah mentions you by your name this is what happened to some of the companions the Prophet والسلام, once said to his beloved companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he said Ya Abdullah Iqra Ali al Quran. Or Abdullah recites some Quran upon me. Abdullah said, A alayka akra wa alayka unzil. O Messenger of Allah, shall I recite the Quran to you? Whereas the Quran has been revealed on you, and we always love to enjoy your recitation. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahu amarani biha. Allahu amarani bihada. Allah has ordered me to ask you to recite the Quran on me. Subhanallah. Allah has ordered me. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is one of the best reciters among the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam said, Man ahabba an yaqra' al-Qur'an kama unzila tariya fal yaqra' ala qira'ati Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Whoever would like to recite the Qur'an as the Qur'an is being revealed fresh right now, he should imitate Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his companion Ubay ibn Ka'b radiyallahu ta'ala Ubay ibn Ka'b, another reciter of the Qur'an, Someone who had strong love for the Qur'an. Someone who used to recite the Qur'an day and night. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah amarani an aqra'a alayka al-Qur'an. The Prophet alayhi salatu sallam said to Ubayy ibn Ka'ab, O Ubayy, Allah has ordered me to recite the Qur'an to you. Ubayy radiyallahu ta'anhu asked, 
the question, direct question. He said, Allahu Sammani. Did Allah name me? Did Allah name me? The Prophet ﷺ said, Naam, Allahu Sammak. Yes, Allah has named you. And this status, this high status, and this great virtue is given to those who have strong love for the book of Allah. Because if you have that love, that respect for the kalam of Allah, for the speech of Allah, for the book of Allah, for Al Quran Al Kareem, Al Kitab Al Majid Al Aziz, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise your rank. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast the love and respect for you in the hearts of the people. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna lillahi ahlina min al nas. Allah has his ahl from the people. And the word ahl is usually used for the family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from having a family. He is free from having a child or wife or father or brother or sibling, anyone. Lam yakullahu kufwan ahad. But because as the family has a strong and no one is closer to you than your own family. That is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used the word Inna lillahi ahlina min nas Allah has his ahl amongst the people. The companion said Man hum ya Rasulullah Who are the ahl of Allah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Ahlul Qur'ani hum ahlullahi wa khasat The people of Qur'an are the ahl of Allah and they are the chosen people by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to be amongst those people. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us all amongst those who are Ahlullahi wa khasatu. And may Allah Dhul Jalal Quran give us tawfiq and ability to have that strong love for the book of Allah Dhul Jalal Quran so that we recite it and we enjoy the recitation of the Quran during the day and during the night and we draw ourselves closer to Allah Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. So let's come to the next point which is the recitation of the Quran, as I said at the start, the, for particularly those who think that they cannot recite the Quran because they never learned it. As I said, this is a lame excuse. No young, no youth, no elder, no man, no woman, no one should have this excuse. No matter how old you are, this excuse is not acceptable. Because if you carry this excuse, you will be depriving yourself first and foremost from great reward. And secondly, you will become amongst the neglectful people. Neglectful people. And Allah has warned, Allah has, re Allah has warned those who are neglectful, Allah has warned them in the Quran. Allah said to his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La min al O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't become amongst the neglectful people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man qara'a fi laylatin mi'ata ayah, kutiba min al-qanitin, wa man qara'a, lay wa man qara'a mi'ata ayatin min al-Quran, lam yuktab fi al Whoever recites 100 ayat at a night, he is removed from the list of the neglectful people. Meaning, if you don't recite 100 ayat, and 100 ayat doesn't mean it has to be long ayat. It can be 100 ayat from Juz Amma. Short ayat. But do recite something so that you are out of the category of those who are neglectful. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith collected by Imam Muslim Rahimahullah Al-Mahir Bil-Quran Ma'as Safarat Al-Kiram Al-Barara The one who is well versed with the Quran Someone who is expert in the recitation of the Quran Ma'as Safarat Al-Kiram Al-Barara He is like or he will be with those uh, scribes of the Quran that uh, the closest angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those angels who are pious and right and they are close to Allah dhul jalal Quran. The one who is expert in reciting the Quran is like them. 
as for the one والذي يقرأ القرآن ويتتعتع فيه وهو عليه شاق as for the one who recites the Quran but he stutters and he finds it difficult to pronounce the letters correctly and he, fe he faces that issue and that difficulty did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that he should leave it he should not try to learn it he should try to do something else rather than trying to read the Quran he should say subhanallah alhamdulillah Allahu Akbar la ilaha illallah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah 1000 time no 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 the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't recommend that rather he said وَالَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ وَيَتَتَعْتَعُ فِيهِ and the one who recites the Quran and he finds it difficult to recite it لَهُ أَجْرَان he is entitled to double reward he will be given double reward أَجْرُ الْقِرَاءَةِ وَأَجْرُ الْمَشَقَّةِ the reward of reading although he is unable to read although he finds it difficult to read but he still gets a full reward of reading because of his efforts. وَأَجْرُ الْمَشَقَّةِ in, 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 And in addition to this, أَجْرُ الْمَشَقَّةِ The difficulty that he is facing when he recites the Qur'an, he will be given the reward for that difficulty as well. So now you tell me, my dear brother and sister Islam, what excuse you have now? What excuse you have now? I'm unable to read the Quran. And subhanallah is such a lame excuse that those and those uh, revert brothers and sisters, those who make efforts in learning the Quran and they become even expert in the recitation of the Quran. And then on the other hand, you have Muslims who were born in Muslim household and those who had the mother tongue as Arabic language or a language close to it, like Urdu language. More than 50% of the Urdu language words are from Arabic language. And particularly those who speak Urdu or Bengali or Hindi, they should not have an excuse at all. You can easily learn. It is surprising that a, an English person who never learned, who never knew a single letter, one single alphabet of the Arabic before accepting Islam, they enter into the fold of Islam, they make efforts, they learn the Qaeda, they learn the Quran, they learn the Tajweed, they learn the rule of Tajweed, they become even the teachers of the Quran. And the one who is born in a Muslim household, he is now 50, 60, 70, and he has been carrying the excuse for the past 50 years, I'm unable to read the Quran. Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raja. Change yourself. Change yourself now. You shouldn't have an excuse. Always be in mind this hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. وَالَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ وَيَتَتَعْتَعُ فِيهِ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ شَاقْ لَهُ أَجْرَانِ The one who recites the Quran and he stutters and he finds it difficult to read, he will be given double reward. The reward of reading, although his pronunciation is not correct, he still get the reward. And he will be given the additional reward of his difficulties. One of the etiquettes of the Quran is to recite the Quran slowly. So when you adopt the habit of reciting the Quran, it doesn't mean that you start reading This is nothing other than disrespect to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I don't feel embarrassed to say may Allah curse those reciters and even those imams, those who play with the Quran, na'udhu billah in salatu taraweeh. They recite the Quran the way they, they have no love whatsoever for the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either guide them or destroy them. Such people have given a very bad example. The Quran is the Quran, the book of Allah. You should recite every single letter of the Quran with the love. You recite in the book of Allah, the speech of Allah. Allah said to his Nabi, وَقُرْآنًا فَرَقْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَأَهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْثِ 
O Nabi, we reveal the Quran to you so that you can recite upon your companions ala muks slowly. In a very slow pace. Allah said to his Nabi, Waratilil Quran Tartila. Recite the Quran clearly. As Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma used to say that the meaning of this ayah is Iqra il Qur'ana bi bayyina. Read the Quran with complete clarity. Every single letter must be pronounced clearly. This is from the etiquettes of the Quran. This is one of the rights of the Quran upon you. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam even said, Zayyinul Qur'ana bi aswatikum. Beautify the book of Allah. Beautify the Quran. The Quran is beautiful. But increase the beauty of the Quran with your melody, with your nice and sweet voice. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Laysa minna man lam yataghanna bil Quran. The one who does not recite the Quran with a melody, with a nice voice, he has nothing to do with us. He's not from amongst us. So you should recite the Quran with love. Pay in mind that you are reciting the words of Allah, the speech of Allah, the book of Allah, and you will be rewarded for every single letter that you utter. Ten times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as he said, we are getting closer to the month of Ramadan. So we need to start changing our daily routine in terms of the recitation of the Quran. If you do not recite the Quran on a daily basis, start doing it right now. Don't leave it until next morning, even now. After you get up from here, you go back home, recite the Quran before you go to sleep. Or at least get up in the latter part of the night by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offer two rak'at and recite some Quran in Salatul Tahajjud. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah dul Jalal Yukram grants you the love for his book. Because this is something that is not given to everyone. The people of the Quran are the chosen people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses whomsoever he subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. So we should be begging Allah. Oh Allah makes, make us amongst Ahlullah. Amongst khasatuk. Oh Allah make us amongst those who are close to you. Those who are chosen by you. So that we become successful and Quran becomes an evidence in our favor on the day of judgment. And if you do so, Quran will be your companion in this dunya. If you take the Quran as your companion in this dunya, Quran will be your companion in the grave. And the Quran will be your companion on the day of judgment. And Quran will be your companion even in Jannatul Firdaus. When you get into Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as the Prophet sallallahu said, يُقَالُ لِصَاحِبِ الْقُرْآنِ اِقْرَأْ وَرْقِ اِقْرَأْ وَرَتِّلْ وَرْتَقِ كَمَا كُنْتَ تُرَتِّلُ فِي الدُّنْيَا Allah will say the person who used to recite the Quran, the one who had strong love for the Quran, Allah will say to him when he is in Jannah, اِقْرَأْ وَرْتَقِ وَرَتِّلْ Read, start reading the Quran and start climbing the ranks of Jannah. Read the Quran slowly as you used to recite the Quran slowly in the dunya. So you will be going up and up in higher and higher ranks in Jannah while reciting the Quran. So Quran will be with you in the grave in Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to have that strong love for his book. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst ahlullahi wa khasatu. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our shortcomings, our mistakes. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to rectify our mistakes and our errors. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins. Innahu sami'un qareeb mujib. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa